Roger, you've got to talk. But don't you realize what you're doing? Unless you make a statement and agree to narco-analysis, the judge is left with no alternative but to sentence you. When they do it, will they make me talk then? Well, for crying out loud, what difference will that make then? At that time, Roger Andover will be a dead man. The man will walk out of there sometime, but he, he'll look like you, but he will not be you. Not be anybody. Will they make me talk? No. Unless you agree to it, they can't make you. But don't you see that no matter what you say, it couldn't be any worse than this? You've got two hours to reconsider. Think about it. When my attorney left, they served my lunch. Very delicious. If you like prison fare. I was in a bit of a mess, but I, I didn't have a lot to say. It all started because they, Stuart French and his wife, told me I'd be bypassed for the vice presidency of the company simply because I was a bachelor. SF-68. SF-68. Biotex, the new soak and free wash powder brings you SF-68. Stories which plunge vividly into other worlds. Other dimensions, other times. SF sixty eight. Keep the gleaming new wax finish on your furniture with Pledge. You simply spray it on and wipe. Pledge waxes and polishes instantly as you dust. There's no rubbing required. Give new life to tired-looking furniture with Pledge. Look for the push-button aerosol can. Pledge, now only 59 cents. I feel like a new man. It's a lovely day today. I thought you had flu. I took a grandpa headache powder, and I'm well better. When colds and flu are about, grandpa headache powders are what you need. Grandpa headache powders work fast because they dissolve almost immediately. Grandpa makes all those dreadful flu symptoms disappear quickly. So, whenever you're in pain, get fast relief. Get Grandpa Headache Powder. Ah, Grandpa. SS-68 presents Andover and the Android, adapted for radio by Michael McKay. Andover and the Android. Yes, there's something about a bachelor. Soon as a certain kind of person or organization gets to know about one, plans are immediately passed to end the bachelor's happy state. To try and make him as miserable as any common or garden married man. It's like a conspiracy. Trying to make me as miserable as any common or garden married man. Why should I take this simpering female to dinner if I don't want to? I'm sick and tired of Mathilde's efforts to get me married off to every visiting cousin and niece who... That pipe's bad for you, Roger. Why do you miss this? Because I enjoy it. <coughs> no, blast it, I don't. I'm seriously considering going back to cigarettes. Just the thought of all those smelly, cluttered ashtrays. Look, old man, if you want the vice presidency, you have to be married. It's as simple as that. But Till wants to keep it in the family. What do you women have against bachelors? You're safely married, and so is Matilde. Why can't you leave me alone? I'll go and powder my nose. Leave your men to sort it all out. Bye. <sighs> sort it out? Nothing to sort out. Blast it, Stuart. If I were you, Roger, I'd give the idea of marriage a lot of consideration. You know Matilda's the one who will actually make the choice of the vice president. 
Not that Evan would admit it, but it's true. And she won't choose a bachelor. They consider it, uh... Well, not quite normal. Not quite normal? Just because I love my music and my books. Just because I've yet to meet a woman who could possibly share my interests without cluttering up my life with a lot of nonsense about changing the flat and having a tribe of messy kids clambering over everything. Stuart, I can't abide women. I know sometimes that... Sometimes? Sometimes. Well, they have to run everything. They interfere. They try to manage men like they manage money. No, thank you. To blazes with it, Stuart. I like living alone. Not quite normal. Not quite normal. Not quite normal. The fact that I've always considered marriage slightly irregular never seems the least bit odd to me. It's inexplicable to women. During the next few weeks, I found myself attending innumerable parties, playing bridge with innumerable women, ranging in age from 35 to 60, all possessing one trait in common, eligibility. The webs of society closed on me. There was a certain Mrs. Arbor, a widow. The night she proposed dinner in her flat, with her doing the cooking, I panicked. The next day, I boarded a plane for New York, Within two hours of getting through customs, I was in the offices of Android Incorporated. Still managing sales over there in England, huh? <laughs> Time a bit of promotion came your way. <clears throat> yes. Yes. I'm uh, afraid uh, I don't have any uh, need for any more of those circuits you people made up for us uh, using magnetic tapes. Now, I'm not here on company business. Private business, you might say. Private well, I'll just tell my secretary Very and private. not to interrupt us. I'll have a fix of the drink. I'll no need for all that. I want an android. I want you to get me one. You want... You know better than that. <laughs> you know an individual isn't allowed to own androids. At this point, I'll explain, in case you don't know, just what an android is. It's a man-made human being... A robot, if you like. Only a highly developed one. One that can, well, practically pass for human. Talk. Perform various functions. Ah, the wonders of science. Cullen was put out. You're joking. No, I don't want androids. Just one. Made to my specifications, which I have brought with me. I'm not joking. I'll want it by the end of August. You're out of your mind, Andover. I'd be rehabilitated for a thing like that. I couldn't get away with it in the first place, sir. There are too many channels. Remember that contract Android Incorporated had with us in Britain? One million seven hundred thousand dollars, wasn't it? You ought to know. You handled the contract. Um, it seems I remember that Android Incorporated paid two million. Of course, I could be wrong. What are you driving at? Three hundred thousand dollars. Where is it, Mr. Cullen? Floating about somewhere? I see you've uh, moved to Washington. Mansion, two cars. You're playing the stock exchange with big funds, aren't you, Cullen? I'm sure if I did a few hours' work, I could find out just where that missing 300,000 went to. Blackmail. Sort of, old boy, sort of. I could forget I knew about it, though, for a small consideration. After all, you put in some hard graft to make the money... Who am I to say it was dishonest? What do you want? What I said. An android. Qualifications, height, five foot five, weight, eight stone, average intelligence and looks, fully coordinated to handle the routine complexities of situations that might arise while functioning as a housewife. I want you to have it, uh, her, ready the last week of August. I'll get in touch with you before then and let you know where to deliver it. Oh, yes, and um, have several empty tapes to be filled in by us. You're insane. That's several million dollars worth of equipment you're ordering. And you want it uh, uh, just like that? Cullen, I know you can have it made up for experimental purposes and no questions asked. Uh, well, well uh, I could get uh, Panowski to work one out... Uh, but he'd want it back for checks every so often. Uh, uh, he'd create it if he couldn't have access to it. Well, Mr. Cullen, 
It's been most pleasant. New York's looking beautiful at this time of the year. I'm sure you can arrange the details. After all, it isn't every day or every year, for that matter, that one can make 300,000 tax-free dollars in exchange for a little favor. Cullen had no option, of course. They made me my android. I must say, she was absolutely remarkable. Uh, Lydia, my dear, you've heard me speak of Matilda and Evan, haven't you? Why, of course, Roger. How do you do, Matilda? Evan, it gives me such pleasure. And Stuart and Eleanor? Eleanor, I've heard so much about you, my dear. I think your country is wonderful. Average looks, I'd ordered. But she was a little more than that. I would have defied anybody. She was simply a good-looking, pert, sophisticated, all-American woman, aged round about 28. Matilda and Eleanor were satisfied. I looked forward to a return to my pleasant, routine life and to the presidency into the bargain. I was ideally happy. When we were asked out, Lydia performed perfectly. When we were left alone, I shut her away in a cupboard. The first shock came three months later. I got home one evening and found the flat and Lydia's cupboard empty. Apart from the fact that I was worried, I'd become used to her, blasted. And then there was the embarrassment of the woman in the lift. Now, this girl, Mr. Andover, did she take her belongings? She left this morning, Mr. Andover. We all saw her go. She was with a man. I knew who the culprit was, of course. It's expensive to phone New York, but after all, I expected to be vice president within a matter of months. Callum, I won't have you coming over here and taking her up it out with you. The neighbors gossip. Andover, you never answered my letters. I had to produce the thing for Panowski. He's getting suspicious. Panowski wants to follow through with the experiment. She you Lydia, my head it's not an experiment. What? She's... A blasted the thing belongs to me. My android. I've got proof about certain things that'll ruin you, Cullen. Sure, but I... I'm flying to New York. I'll see you tomorrow morning. Have her ready for me, or else. Yeah, but... Just not allowed. Waltzing into another chap's flat and running off with his wife. Anyway, it's my ruddy android. Doesn't seem the same without her. Over there in a cupboard. It was costing me a great deal, rocketing back and forth to New York. Andover. I told Panowski we were developing it for use in institutions, and he's curious about when we'll go ahead with production. He doesn't understand why no one else knows about it. He tested it all night, brought it back this morning. Cullen, is Panowski the only one who knows about it? Uh, apart from you and me, of course. There were others helping, of course, but uh, they never saw the finished thing. It was just another job to them. But think of Panowski. He's a genius. You can't blame him for a for wanting to see how his creation's coming along. Not at all. I don't blame him for being curious. I just blame him for being alive. What? Uh, nothing. I had a letter recently from Mrs. VP, head of 7th Street Parkmore to Hannesburg, and she said... I cannot fully describe my utter delight on returning to the washing to find the stubborn stains of two months standing completely removed. I am so glad I discovered your product, Biotex. And now, Mrs. J. Longman of Cambridge, West East London, wrote to say, just a word of thanks for your new soak and wash powder, Biotex. I find it almost too good to be true. I've just finished my first packet, and I washed all my baby's woolens with it, and they really do stay white. And what is more, they keep their shape so well, too. Once again, thanks for a wonderful product. 
I'm just hoping you won't wait too long before putting a large economy-sized packet on the market. Well, thank you, Mrs. Head of Parkmore and uh, Mrs. Longman for your endorsements. I, too, can endorse Biotex by making certain claims to you, ladies, the most important of which is that with Biotex, the stubbornest, the very stubbornest stains just vanish merely by soaking. I wanted the security Lydia gave me very badly. I had to end the threat called Panowski. He couldn't remain alive knowing about Lydia. He might demand Cullen produce her again and again. He might even have wanted to change her. Panowski held her very life in his hands. I didn't keep her in the cupboard anymore. She sat with me in the evenings when I read my books or listened to my music. I mean, would you like to be kept in a cupboard? She was my safeguard, the one who made my evenings possible. No man in the world had a more satisfactory wife. She was perfect and not at all demanding. She could discuss my books. She could exclaim over the brushwork of my favorite artists. And she'd sit completely immobile throughout the whole of my most treasured concerts. Lydia, we'll go to New York tomorrow and get this settled once and for all. We'll see Panowski, uh, rent a flat, apartment for a day or two. Yes, dear. Best thing I ever turned out. Perfect reflex coordination, would you not say? You must tell your government all about her, Doctor. Um, who did you see? Ah, seems strange to see her here in my apartment with you. Maybe I can take it away again for a few days, huh? Uh, how long are you staying in New York? Prepare drinks, Lydia. In the kitchen. It. How dare he speak of Lydia as an it? Lydia moved gracefully to the door. And Panowski leered. Leered as he watched her. He turned. Just in time for me to see the changed expression on his face. As I hit him with the hammer. Andover. Andover, this is Colin. You've got to get rid of that android. Panowski's been killed. Panowski? He's murdered in his apartment. Oh, it's terrible. But what's more terrible is the android. If they find Panowski's papers, they'll know he made it. Andover, now listen. Are you what drunk, you... Colin? What android? Do you understand what I'm saying? We'll both be sent up for rehabilitation. Well, Colin. If I were you, I'd make sure no papers were found then. And over you can. It's good sense, really, not to allow the populace at large to own androids. Too many have been used in the past for nefarious activities. Of course, they weren't like Lydia. Not at all. There's never been an android like Lydia. Lydia was good. She'd never have done anything wrong. We flew back to Britain, Lydia and myself, and our life continued happily for a while. It was at a party given to celebrate our first anniversary that she showed the first signs of malfunctioning. <laughs> she was listening quietly as usual to the conversation about her. No one any longer paid attention to her peculiar reticence or the civility but accepted it as part of the shy personality that she was. I saw it first. There was a sudden cloying of her fingers. A look of dissolution passed over her face. I wondered if a minute wire had burnt out, or a transistor or something had gone flat. I watched her anxiously. And of course, I was the one who gave her away. Why, Lydia, dear, are you ill? Uh, she's all right. A little warm, perhaps. It's quite natural, I believe. It, it is rather oppressive. It, uh, open a window, perhaps. Wow. Why, Lydia, do you mean that you and Roger are expecting? Well, congratulations. Of course not. <laughs> of course, dear. Uh, Mathilde, you don't understand. It's the heat, always. The, 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 uh... Oh, really, Roger, she should know. 
How foolish you are. You should be happy like Lydia. I must admit the smile on Lydia's face shocked me. I began to feel faint myself. Dizzy. I believe I even felt a premonition of disaster then. You are angry, aren't you, Roger? No, of, uh, of course not. Uh, uh, thanks for the evening, Mathilde. Uh, Evan, uh, we have to be going. But, Roger, poor Lydia, you mustn't just... Uh, you, you don't understand. Uh, uh, misunderstanding. Lydia can't be... Well, I mean, it's impossible. Uh, Lydia, let's go. <laughs> I changed while Lydia mixed me a drink. I had to think. I didn't know what to do. I mean, this was unprecedented. I couldn't even ask Panowski about it because I killed him. Then, while I was changing, I heard the dishes crashing to the floor in the kitchen. <coughs> Lydia, stop! Lydia! I order you. Look down. Lydia, stop it. Stand still. She didn't lift another dish. She stood without moving, one arm outstretched in the act of picking up another plate, the motion incomplete. On her face, there was a meaningless, frozen smile. Lydia, turn round and walk into the living room. I didn't know what to do. Apart from the fact that the neighbors would all know we'd been having a row, I had to do something. Lydia wouldn't move. She'd gone wrong. I phoned Cullen. He was scared stiff. I told him he had to come to England. He made a million excuses, but I had quite a hold over him. He arrived 48 hours later. Sit down. Sit down, Lydia. Sit down, you stupid grinning... Cullen! Don't you talk to her like that. And over. Be reasonable. She's a... Blast it, man. You're dealing with an android. You talk as if you... Oh, her arms, they... Oh, give me a cloth or something to put over her face. I can't stand the way she's looking at me. You can't cover her up. <laughs> if only you hadn't have gone through with this crazy business, Andover. We'll have to get her fixed, won't we? Have to cure her. Cure her? But, but there's no one to cure her. Panowski's dead. There's no one else. But people will want to know what's happened to my wife. Uh, to Lydia. She can't just disappear. I mean, Cullen, you've got to help me. Find anyone. The best brain available. I'll, I'll pay anything. Okay, okay. I'll, I'll do what I can. I'll, I'll try. I'll have to take her to the States, though. But how? I'll have to have her... Uh... Well, uh, three crates should do it. You can't take her to bits. How else do you suppose I'm going to get her through custom? <laughs> There must be something wrong with you, Roger. Look at yourself, man. Aren't you sleeping? Well, what's wrong? I... Nothing, Stuart. It's just that... Well, you might as well know. Lydia hasn't been well lately. I've sent her to New York to see a specialist. Oh, I'm sorry, of course, but... But why New York? Wasn't there someone here that could... Uh, have... No. Her complaint, um... Reason to believe it's quite rare. Had to be America. Oh. Oh, I'm sorry, Roger. I'm so sorry. Look, let me know if there's anything Eleanor can do to help. The nightmare had started. I couldn't get in touch with Cullen, and he didn't contact me. After two weeks, I made it known that Lydia had arrived back in England and had gone to a nursing home. I had to tell everyone that she wasn't to be visited, and this was thought strange. But there was nothing I could do about it. I had to give an address and a fictitious doctor. The terrifying thing was, it wasn't just that I had to get her back to keep up appearances. Blasted, I'd become used to her. My evenings weren't the same anymore. I found myself talking to no one. I thought I was going a bit potty. I spent a fortune on transatlantic calls. I never got further than Cullen's secretary. She didn't know where he was. I couldn't sleep. My appetite dropped off. Poor Lydia. Did she suffer? Could she suffer? Would they return her to me the same as before? In my imagination, I saw her smooth plastic skin being peeled back. 
and her wires and tubes and tapes exposed to strangers. I wish Cullen had been with Panowski the night I killed him. Android Incorporated official ship with half a million. Android Incorporated man leaves the USA with half a million. Questions asked about how to swing the first drive of the Atlantic. Read all about it. Android Incorporated official ship with half a million. Cullen had fled. He took all he could find loose, and with the money I'd given him to make Lydia well again, that made him quite a rich man. I tried not to think of Lydia. She was gone. She was dead. And I realized something terrible then. What had started out as a scheme to give me an easy life had developed into a mania. I couldn't live without my android. And then they came for me. Or rather, one man came for me. Mr. Randover, Inspector Farrell, New Scotland Yard. I'd like to ask you a few questions about your wife, if you don't mind. Decided to tell what really happened, Roger. I warned what happened? you. That... I thought the evidence made it quite clear what happened. My wife was unfaithful, and I killed her. Just as any normal man would. We've used Biotex, and they're enthusing about this new product. They've endorsed it, and I've given you their names, and you'll hear these endorsements on the air from time to time, plus many others. My own endorsement is that with Biotex, ladies, the stubborn stains will really disappear. They just vanish. And merely by soaking. You can use Biotex for whites and for colors, too, for all your textiles and, of course, for synthetics. And Biotex has no bleach. I say it frequently. Let soaking do your washing. And the big thing about Biotex is that it works in a biological way by using the natural enzymes. By this I mean Biotex is completely different. It is something you have never had available before. Now, its name is B-I-O-T-E-X. And no matter where you live in this country, you can buy Biotex for yourself and for your family. You have just been listening to Andover and the Androids by Kate Wilhelm. Brought to you by Biotex, the new soak and pre-wash powder. Andover and the Android was adapted for broadcasting and produced by Michael McCabe. Listen again next Friday night at half past nine to SF. 68.